great hero in historic art. And of course, what you all remember about William Tell is that he was civil disobedient and stood up to uh, a ridiculous role and, and uh, took steps towards founding the Swiss Confederation. That's what you remember about William Tell, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Never give your hero a stunt like shooting an apple off of somebody's head because that's what's going to stick with your audience. So, uh, Sadly, that's what we do remember of William Tell, but uh, you know, it's still kind of a cool story. And it actually happened several times back in history, all the way back to Harold Bluetooth, who ordered some idiot to shoot an apple off you know, somebody's head. And it threw out across cultures and throughout the medieval world the shooting of a piece of indigenous fruit off of the head of someone you love became an allegory for someone in power asking you to do something absolutely ridiculous for no reason other than to tell people. So it really became the emblem of civil disobedience. Did you guys do it yet? <laughs> I'm sorry, was I supposed to do something? Yes! I'm lecturing about the Swiss Confederation and I'm starting to do something! Not so much on the hands of the athlete. Same point, but yeah, I can give you the same point. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Wait until! In the present wooded valley, lived a huntsman. Tall and able, he relied on skill and cunning for the food upon his table. He would walk the forest shadows with his little son in tow, teaching him the archer's arts and all that he should know. Keep your body clear and keen like a falcon on the wing. Keep your heart strong and steady like your hand upon the string. Never bow. I will try your love of our day low, for the highest head may fall to the man who wields a bow. In the valley there was freedom, and the man was left to living, but as the year gave way to year, the ruling men grew less forgiving. On a day of black as death, the governor to them came, dirty glass men into slaves, and guess what was his name? In the center of the village, Gessler set a lofty pillar, and he ordered every subject, be he serve or be a pillar, to do homage to the hat that Gessler placed atop the pole, or to forfeit to the crown his life and not his soul. But the huntsman William Tell came into town the morning after. William heard of Gessler's order and could only roar with laughter. Honest men should hold a rank above a petty autocrat. I would never bow to him, I'll not bow to his hat. Keep your eye clear and keen like a falcon on the wing. Keep your heart strong and steady like your hands upon his string. Never bow to a tyrant while your people are let go. For the highest end may fall to the man who can be the only one. Yeah. Just the soldier sees the huntsman and his little son for treason. But the people of the village is right for the right thing and for a reason. Just the state the execution, but a cruel test is right. Prove to me your skill and you may ransom back your life. I have heard it said you have no fear with a longbow and with arrow. That your shaft can find the quickest hair and fell the smallest arrow. On the head of your young son, a brazen apple, white and red. Split it with one shot or at my words, you both are dead. William Tell went to his son and said, I swear I will not hurt you. Courage will not bow to fear, nor shall this evil conquer hurt you. Turn your face towards our home and stand as still as any tree. I will split the apple, you shall soon be home and free. Keep your eyes clear and keen like a falcon on the wing. Keep your heart strong and steady like your hand. Never bow to the tyrant while your people are laid low. For the highest they may fall to the man who feels the bow. Every tongue was 
still and silent as the archer paced the distance. Yes, the soldiers lined the square, and there was no hope of resistance. William knocked a single arrow, put his shoulders back, and drew. Then the arrow sang and split the apple clean in two. All at once the crowd erupted into cheers and into chatter. And a second arrow fell from William's quiver with a clatter. Kessler said, why hold two arrows when I bid you shoot but one? That one would have found your heart if I had shot my son. Take the archer now and hang him. Kessler to his bed was crying, but before the soldiers flew, the archer and his son were flying. From the shelter of the wood, the hunter loosed the final dart. Kessler died with William's arrow, buried in his heart.